but you will never do anything as hard as staring someone straight in the eye and telling the truth. Hello everyone, you're listening to Story to Light, a podcast where we discuss Christianity, faith, and the arts. This is a production of LaSalle Catholic College Prep. My name is Anna Marie. And I'm Samantha. And I'm Lenora. On this episode, we will be discussing Sin and Redemption by looking at the film A Most Violent Year that was released in 2014 and analyzing it with other religious sources. This movie takes place in winter in 1981 in New York. It faces a business owner, Abel Morales, and his wife, Anna, and they own a standard heating oil company. This takes place during the most violent year in New York, and so they are facing violence and fierce competitors within the oil industry while fighting to maintain um, integrity and honesty. We are going to follow Abel's journey in acquiring $1.5 million to secure and close on the property, and we will key in on Abel, the main character, and his wife, Anna. Secondary sources we're going to look at are The Virtue Toolbox and Flannery O'Connor's essay, Catholic Novelists and Their Readers. And a couple of major questions we have for the film are, what message does this movie send about facing temptation, and what role does violence play in the movie? In the beginning of the movie, Abel is striking a deal with a group of Jewish men. He has already put down a down payment of 40% on this property, and according to the contract, he has 30 days left to close on the property, or else it will be sold to someone else and the men will keep the down payment, so Abel will suffer a major loss. Basically, his whole business that he's worked up to at this point is writing on this property. So it means a lot to him in the future of his business and also his own personal future and his family's future. So Abel has been facing a lot of violence within his company. His truck drivers are being attacked and he has a rising suspicion that all these people are being paid by some of his competitors. One night, their family's house is broken into Abel and Anna. And Anna gets really upset because she wants something to be done about these people who are threatening their company and their family. But Abel, being the honorable man he is, doesn't want to involve Anna's father, who is part of the mafia. He wants to keep everything as low-key as possible. So they think everything is fine, so they go on with their lives. And then a couple days later, Anna is walking back with the mail with her kids out in their front yard of their house that they just bought, and she sees her younger daughter, Catherine, playing with a gun. And the youngest daughter found it in the bush in the front yard, and it was a loaded gun, ready to be fired off. And Anna is very mad about this. She's very upset because now it's endangering not only her husband, but her children also, who don't know how to deal with a loaded gun. I mean, they're, what, five or six? They're tiny. So now it poses a threat to their whole family. It's not just Abel and his business, it's their whole lives. And she sees this huge threat and she really wants something to be done about it. So now there's a lot of pressure on Abel from his wife and the company and the competitors and the violence. And he's just having to navigate this pressure while trying to always do the right thing. Another thing is that, as Anna said before, that Abel was trying to be low-key about the situation. He definitely played it off. He was like, oh, it's just like a kid who just ran the front door, who just maybe looking to break in. Like, it wasn't like a target. But after the situation where the daughter was playing with the loaded gun and it was right outside in the bush, it shows that there are serious threats and possible consequences of this industry. And big things can happen unexpectedly. So amongst all these big events having to do with violence, Abel is being tested, really. He goes through all these situations where he has to choose what to do, and, you know, there's always a right and wrong way to do something, a right and wrong choice, yet he always seems to choose the right way. Yeah. So there's a lot of violence with the truck drivers, like they would get hijacked and then get their trucks stolen, and the truck drivers of Abel's company were the victims of a lot of the violence. And so there was a big push. The head of the drivers encouraged Abel to arm his drivers, and he refused. He said, so let them protect themselves. That would stop all this very quickly. I respectfully disagree. He is so against violence in the beginning. He does not want anything to 
do with it. He does not want to be part of that world when this violence is just rampant. He's trying so hard to stay out of it. So this really shows how Abel is using prudence in his life. He is thinking about all these situations very carefully, not making any rash decisions. So he takes the time needed to choose the path that is most right in every situation. Yeah, and in 1981 alone, this is an actual number, there were 2,166 murders, which is a very high rate, and there were over 136 burglaries. So there's just this culture in New York that put this immense amount of pressure, and so the fact that Abel could look at that pressure and choose the right thing always shows how powerful his prudence really is and how strong he is. It is really easy to see that Abel is choosing the most right path in every situation. He even says in the movie that you should know that I have always taken the path that is most right. The result is never in question for me. Just what path do you take to get there? And there is always one that is most right. So surrounded by all this sin, one of the greatest sins one could argue would be violence. Surrounded by all of this in the most violent year of New York, Abel faces this immense amount of temptation and pressure to be a part of that sin and to like join in and fight back using violence. But this quote shows how much he's just choosing the right path. Looking ahead at his goal, at the end goal of his business, he's also trying to only take the right path. He's not really focusing on the end goal because if he was, he would be choosing violence and he would have chosen it a long time ago because that seems to be the way that people are fighting back in this time that he's living in. But since he's only choosing the right path, he's also taking the hard way out, and that shows how strong he is and how much courage he has. Abel says, I will control my fate, but the real answer to your question is that when it feels scary to jump, Ian, that is exactly when you jump. Otherwise, you end up staying in the same place your whole life, and that I can't do. It's kind of a turning point for Abel when he was never using violence and never advocating for violence, and it finally happened. After Abel visited his younger brother and successfully took out a $200,000 mortgage loan against the apartment they owned together that would go towards his $1.5 million goal to secure the property, he hears over the radio in his car that one of his drivers named Eddie has been ambushed by some more men. Abel is driving pretty close, so he ends up being able to go after it, and he chases down the truck, and the truck tips over after they exit a tunnel. One of the men runs out on foot, and Abel starts chasing him. They chase for a pretty long time all throughout the city, and finally they get on the train together, and Abel shoves him off the train and onto the ground when the doors finally open at a stop. Abel turns to violence when he punches him in the face multiple times, and this is a big turning point because in the beginning and all throughout, before this point, he never wanted to do things this way and try to resolve issues with violence. He wanted to do it peacefully and fairly. He then took out a gun and aimed it in the man's left eye, and he was, like, pushing it in his face, and his face was twitching, and his hands were shaking, and you could tell he really didn't know what he was going to do or what he wanted to do in that moment. But eventually, he let the man go and got up and calmed down. And so this turning point of him turning to violence wasn't complete, as in he didn't go through with it, but we do see a shift in how he thinks and how he acts. This actually shows justice in the film because Abel never takes or gives more than he would have done to him. So he doesn't want to kill this man. He doesn't want to shoot him. He wants to give him another chance because that's what Abel would like for himself. So he lets him go. There is one person throughout the movie that is always pushing for more violence, and that is his wife, Anna. She wants to involve violence in order to scare off their competitors and anyone that is harming them and their their family and their company. She is also the one who ends up taking that gun that she found in the bushes and shooting a deer that they hit on the road. And Abel is very startled by this. He never would have done that. Yet she does and keeps asking him why he won't, but it is because he's so honorable. So Abel is taking a hard route. He's being courageous and he has prudence and he's fighting for justice in the most peaceful way possible. This also shows how much patience he has with his competitors, his family, especially Anna, his workers. He never blames them. 
he's always very supportive. So throughout his trials, he never loses sight of his goal. Abel especially shows patience for his worker, Julian. He's one of the truck drivers. And Julian is the first worker shown in the movie that was attacked on a run. And he was sent to the hospital. And he returned, actually, later in the movie, back to work, and goes on on another run. And this, from Julian, shows courage to try again, even when he faced violence the first time. And unfortunately, on his first run back, he again gets attacked by two men. And this is on a bridge in the middle of the day, in front of a ton of people, and they have a shootout. No one gets shot or injured, but they all run from the cops who show up and he runs and he hides. This causes a big scandal for Abel's company, especially when his company's already been under investigation for other charges, and so this doesn't look good, and Abel and his attorney decide to turn Julian into the police, but when they do, Julian runs away and he gets away. And then we don't see Julian again until the very end of the movie when he comes up in front of Abel and Anna with a gun. And Julian tells Abel, I have nowhere to go. I have nothing. And somehow you have ended up with everything you wanted. You give me a better chance than I deserved, right? And Abel, kind of taken aback by this, and kind of, you can see he's emotionally conflicted in his face. He goes, no, you're looking backwards. Look forward. That's the only thing you can control. And Julian then asks Abel to take care of his family and then brings the gun to his head and commits suicide. And this is kind of a shock to Abel, to Anna, and all throughout this time, Abel has tried to be patient with Julian and tried to do the right thing. And maybe he had a connection with Julian, and turning him into the cops' face as a betrayal to Julian. And but really, Abel was looking out for his company, looking out for his family, looking out for himself. He was listening to lawyers, and that is what he felt was the right thing to do. I think Julian felt he got the short end of the stick, and saying that he is nothing. Abel has everything he's ever wanted, which I think that the fact that he views Abel as having everything he ever wanted, I don't know if that's really the case from Abel's point of view, his own personal point of view, but if you look at it, he has a large house, he has a family, he has a loving wife, he's a pretty successful business at this point, he has it pretty solid and safe and secured, he has just gotten the property, so it really does look like Abel has everything wanted but he has only ever taken the right path to get there so i think julian also running was not the right path for him to take so this kind of is an example of how taking the right path and doing the right thing and having that prudence and that courage to do the right thing can lead you to the successful goal that you want to get to julian it seemed like he always had the mindset that he could get to the point that abel was super quickly but i think the thing that he didn't understand with that was that abel had worked so hard and you know taken all these right steps to get where he was and julian was frustrated that he hadn't reached that point yet and that everything in his life seemed to be going the wrong way while abel's was going the right way yeah i don't think he realized how much prudence and how much courage Abel actually had to have to be able to choose the right thing with all that temptation of the violence. And I mean, think about the pressure. He's the top of the business and all these people, all of his employees are getting hijacked. They're victims of violence. And somehow, in some way, he is responsible for that. So he has felt this amount of pressure and to always do the right thing takes a lot of courage and a lot of strength. And I don't think Julian realized that when this happened at the end. Abel is shocked to see that Julian is back at work, and he says, Glad to see you back here. You look good. You ready to get back to work? And Julian replies, I think so. Abel says, Where are you headed? And Julian says, A bulk delivery to Chase. Abel says, Manhattan. It's a cakewalk. Julian says, I feel vulnerable, but to be successful and great, you must keep going back. This shows a ton of courage from Julian to be able to return to this job that brought him a ton of pain and suffering. And if I was in that situation, I would definitely be scarred by that event and not want to return. And when Abel says Manhattan is a cakewalk, that shows care for Julian because he's encouraging him and motivating him and letting him know that this is a good decision to return and face your fears and that he will be successful and make it. At the train station, when Abel was holding the man down, the attacker, the man was pleading, please, please. He was begging him not to shoot him. And when Abel lets him go, he says, go get out of here. And the man gets up and is like leaning against the wall, catching his breath. And he finally admits he doesn't work for anybody, but that he sold a load of 
Abel stolen fuel in Far Rockaway last week. And this just shows that turning to violence or turning to extreme measures to get answers, to get what you want, is not always the right way to do things. In this scene, we see how after Abel let the man go, he didn't just run away and never want to see him ever again. He talked to him and gave him answers. And it just shows, again, prudence, choosing the right decisions, and also the man, the attacker, knowing that he did cause Abel all this pain and trouble, and that this was the right decision to give him answers so that this doesn't happen again. And hopefully the guy realized that what he's been doing all this time is wrong and that there would be serious consequences for him. So when Abel is chasing down this man and figure out who he works for, he's trying to figure out who is stealing all this oil from him. And he's losing a lot of money and a lot of oil. So he's trying to figure out who is stealing this oil from him. And he eventually finds out that it's kind of one of his friends. It's an acquaintance from the barber shop that he goes to. And earlier in the movie, we see them. Abel goes to the barber shop and they're friendly. They're, they're talking. They seem like they're friends. They seem like they're on the same page. They're on each other's side. And then we find out that it's been this man who's been doing it to him all along. And I think Abel felt a bit of betrayal from that. And then he went to confront this man and did it in a very strong and clear and concise fashion, but he did not use violence. This man has afflicted and unleashed violence on Abel to steal his oil, to be his rival, to compete against him, and Abel does not respond with that violence once he finds out who he is. I would imagine that he would be pretty upset and angered to find out that this man is someone he knew and trusted and probably liked. And the fact that he doesn't respond with violence, still it shows that prudence, it shows the courage, shows how strong he really is and how he really is willing to do the right thing no matter what. Even when he is faced with violence, when he's faced with anger, when he's faced with all these things that are tempting him to go the wrong way, he still chooses the right way. It definitely seems like he knows that if he was in that situation, he would want to be treated with the same kind of, maybe not respect, but at least dignity. You know, this man did something wrong, yes, but he has the chance, Abel is giving him the chance to pay him back exact, the exact amount that he owed him. Wasn't going to get the feds involved unless he didn't pay him. So yeah, this shows that he really understands that. And we really see the contrast here in this scene where Abel is able to keep calm and the man is definitely not showing prudence as he's cheating the system, as trying to, as he's trying to build his company and gain status in the business. Abel is choosing the right and fair methods to establish his company further and make it big, while this man is not choosing the right ways and trying to manipulate the industry in order to get on top of others. And the fact that he's hurting someone else to make himself better definitely does not show prudence or, or care and not the right decision when you're trying to make things happen. Especially since this man actually rats out the other oil companies or men in charge of the oil companies that also bought oil from these men who stole from Abel's company. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. So all this goes to show that throughout the entire movie, Abel is always um, choosing the most honorable path, even though it may be the hardest path, and he's staying strong to his beliefs despite temptation. He's refusing to conform to the norm of his industry, this oil industry. Everyone should follow what Abel Morales had to say. You should know that I have always taken the path that is most right. The result is never in question for me. Just what path do you take to get there? And there is always one that is most right. Looking at this movie as a whole, and also looking at Flannery O'Connor's essay, Catholic Novelists and Their Readers, I think the two are very closely connected and intertwined. Flannery O'Connor in her essay says that, quote, the novelist is required to open his eyes on the world around him and look. If what he sees is not highly edifying, he is still required to look. Then he's required to reproduce with words what he sees. End quote. And so, I mean, obviously this film is a film and not a book, so we can look at the writers and the creators of the movie as the novelists in this situation. During this time, we see that it was a very high crime rate. Like, as I said before, there were over 136,000 vehicle thefts, which is very pertinent to this um, whole movie 
Um, all the truck thefts are a very key part. And this is in 1981 when this movie takes place. And there were over 2,100 murders in New York City. And to kind of connect this to now, in 2013, there were 15,482 vehicle thefts and 648 murders. According to this website, Bustle, the year 1981 was statistically the most dangerous year in the city's history. We see this throughout the whole movie with the vehicle thefts, the attempted robberies in this Morales' home, the gun that the daughter found, all the violence that Abel's employees suffered. And we see that this is the hard truth during this time. This is really what life was like for Abel. If you were in this situation, if you were a real person in this situation, this is probably what a honorable, respectable businessman would have endured. Flannery O'Connor in her essay says that a main goal of the Catholic novelist is to write the truth, no matter how hard that truth is, no matter how difficult it is to understand and to hear and to see. It is very important to tell that truth, and he is required to reproduce with words what he sees in her words. She explains that this might be hard to do as a Catholic, as a writer, because sometimes they might conflict and they might, I mean, it deals with topics of sin, and those are very hard to deal with with religion also. And I don't know if the writers of A Most Violent Year were religious, we don't know that, but one thing I do know is that they did write the truth, they did show this movie in the most real way possible, they put it in the time context, they put it in the correct historical context of this movie. And doing that definitely sends the audience really important messages that they needed to hear. If the truth wasn't displayed or shown or portrayed accurately, or just the truth in general, people would get the wrong messages from the movie and the wrong sense of what is supposed to be done. And so the truth with this movie definitely is helpful in teaching the audience about what is good and how to deal with challenges and face face your fears, face your enemies, um, how to face them the correct way. History is really important. We use it to look back on and see what we could have done differently and what we should do in the future. And Abel even says to Julian in the movie that you're looking backwards, look forward. It's the only thing you can control. And we should really take that into account. We should look back on history and use it as an example of what to do and what not to do, but we shouldn't dwell in the past because we can only control what's ahead of us. And um, this might be a bit of a stretch, but this kind of reminds me of The Great Gatsby. Um, We read this last year in AP English, or at least I did, and If you're not familiar with the book, which is a very famous book, it deals with Jay Gatsby, who is eternally kind of stuck in the past. He can't move on. He's focused on this girl, Daisy, who he loved a long time ago, and he's bought the mansion across her house, across the lake, across to her house, all in hopes that one day she'll come back to him. He's stuck in the past, and he's dwelling in the past, and I think connecting it to A Most Violent Year... Abel is enforcing how important it is to not be stuck in the past, how important it is to move on and look ahead to the future by choosing the right path, choosing the right goals. He's sending this message that we really need to look ahead. You can't focus on in the past and linking it back to what Anna said about history. Like The things that have happened in history are history, yet they're very important to learn from and listen to and look back on to know how that has affected our life today, how it's affected the countries and the entire world, and how we can move forward to make better changes and better lessons to continue forward and make a better world. And I think definitely in terms of sin especially, forgiveness becomes a huge part of looking back. We can't hold grudges. And so what happens to Jay at the end of the book? The Great Gatsby? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> um, spoiler alert, kind of. He doesn't reach his goal. He tries really hard and he keeps going and he's f- so focused on the past that he can't move forward. And 
that inability to move forward ends up hurting him in the end, and he makes the wrong choices and ends up he ends up alone and without anything. And I think contrasting that with the Bell, who always chose the right thing, looked ahead, looked to do the right thing always, he ended up with pretty much everything he ever wanted. That also ties in with what uh, Julian experienced because. You know, he was dwelling in the past, and he ended up dying as well. He shot himself. He couldn't let go of what he had done wrong, and he couldn't... He was so stuck in the past that he didn't know how to move on. Yeah, I think Gatsby and Julian are pretty similar in that way. So tying this to our personal lives in high school, it's pretty difficult to focus on exactly what you want to think about and make the right decisions without having a ton of external influences and especially peer pressure. And Abel sets us an example of how to deal with these challenges that we face and all these obstacles that we have to go around. Well, a most violent year takes place in a much more intense setting with greater consequences. We face these problems of choosing the right thing, choosing what to do in the face of temptation and pressure every day. With little things, whether it's like, should I have an apple or a candy bar with my lunch? Or bigger things with college and trying to decide what to do with your future. Abel sends a really powerful message of how it's really important to always choose the right path and the right means to go about the choices you're going to make, no matter what. And this movie kind of shows or hints at the fact that you might have a good ending if you were choosing always the right way. We can learn a lot from this movie, especially talking when we're talking about relationships with people, the golden rule, you know, treat others. treat others as you would want to be treated, and also forgiveness and how big of a thing that is. Um, you need to be able to forgive in order to not dwell in the past and, you know, not hold grudges. I think to put it simply, Abel shows us a perfect model for always doing the right thing in the face of difficulty and danger and temptation and the possibility of sin. He shows us to always take the right path and how that can lead you in a very positive position. And yeah, I I wouldn't say perfect, but you know, he does give us a pretty good example as, you know, a human, you know, we're all human. We all make mistakes, but he does do the best he can as we all should. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Stories of Light with Anna, Samantha, and Lenora. I hope you have a great week. Our intro and outro are written by Sam Jensen, also known as Sevens. Thank you.